Hi everyone, it's Simon here. So, as of this week, Apple has released iOS 16 in public beta and it boasts some serious benefits to both serious and casual iPad users. Most exciting, the claim of full external display support and some desktop level apps. More on that in a minute. So here are my favorite five updates for iOS 16 that could help you make the most of your iPad to be more productive and optimize your day to day, whatever you use it for. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Multiple custom lock screens and focus modes. First off, it's great to see Apple finally embracing more customizable options for the lock screen. Whilst WWDC mostly showed off these features on the iPhone, it will also be available on part of iPad OS. And since you can now create multiple lock screens, I'm now most excited about the way we can now also link specific focus modes to specific lock screens and change between them. If you don't know, focus modes allow you to design your home screen and then restrict your access to certain apps in order to say switch off from work or stay focused on it because you're removing distractions from things like those social media channels you shouldn't be watching. This is the real game changer for the productive optimizers out there. What's more, we'll also be able to include lock screen widgets. So in work mode, I could place key apps like my calendar, email on the lock screen. You could do this across your devices and have work, play modes right through the devices. For you Notion productivity users out there that funnel the channel for that reason, let's hope they create some new widgets in this way. We're gonna set up an API, Apple R, for external developers to do this, and it could be a great key into making the most of quick interaction and capture with things like Notion in the future for our second brains. And hey, if that makes no sense to you, watch some of my Notion playlists for more on how I'm using Notion and a second brain to optimize and organize my entire life. You might find it interesting. So before we move on to that very exciting feature of desktop support for the iPad. There is actually even more to these focus modes in app focus filters. Okay, this is gonna be cool. We can extend our work focus filters to Safari, Mail, Calendars, so that you can filter your access to information and stay on task, or if you're like me, simply avoid that stressful moment on a weekend when you accidentally open a work email and can't stop thinking about it on your day off. What's cool is that developers can also use it in their apps too. This could be great for some third-party apps such as Fantastic Out to help you compartmentalize your life. Let's see if they embrace it. If you'd like to know more about how you can embrace a bit of digital minimalism, then make sure to check out my video on it via my link in the description after this. And you know what? In these intense information frenzied days of the modern world, I'm definitely noticing how my iPhone and my iPad can be a very bad influence on my time, drawing me into long periods of screen time. So I'm super pleased Apple are putting more emphasis on focus modes and helping people think more about actively balancing work and downtime. On that note, I've been doing some great courses recently around how to have a healthier approach to life and getting things done by taking some classes with today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore creativity and personal growth on their own terms. I particularly enjoyed Queer Eye legend Jonathan Van Ness's class called The Ultimate Self-Care Playbook, focused on prioritizing your self-care and wellness as a way to invest in yourself and unwind and relax. And if you've got that on lock, Skillshare is the perfect place to start learning any new skill across a range of subjects from productivity, entrepreneurship and business to creative writing or video. You can find a class that will match your goals and interest on there. So using Skillshare over the last few months has been one of the best things I've done. I think you should give them a try too. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial with Skillshare. So get on it. Right, it's time for that most exciting potential update to iOS that's coming this year. Stage manager and external display support. It's here, it's finally here, sort of, I think. No, definitely. Okay, I'll explain. Stage Manager will finally allow us to adapt our iPads to work with what Apple describes as full external display support. Okay, this is excellent. No more cropped mirrored screen views. It will fill a wide 16 by nine monitor. This is the beginning of full two screen display workflows on the iPad, kind of. So you plug your iPad into the monitor and you'll be able to move your cursor across the two screens. It even allows you to create groups of three or four windows at once using their stage manager system, which is also gonna be on Mac OS. Now we can also move windows around, 
and organize them on the iPad screen. That's really cool. It's not completely free flow though, like it would be on a desktop, but you can do it. This is a great feature for organizing your work and keeping focused on tasks, maybe for something that happens across a number of apps working together. Now the stage manager system has a set of parameters for arranging your desktop. It would look like from what I've seen in a kind of floating menu of apps. So it's not a completely free setup like a Mac OS desktop setup. I guess that's okay and a good step, but the most controversial moment of this discussion, this pro feature for the iPad is only gonna be available for M1 chip versions of the iPad. So that's not me. I'm gonna have to buy another iPad. Maybe that's why. What do you think about that? Should Apple be offering this feature across all its iPads or should they be restricting it to M1? Do they have to restrict it just because of it needs that chip that can run it? Um, let me know in the comments. Hmm. Number four on this iPad productivity list, shared access features for things like tab groups in Safari, documents in pages, or photos and video in your photo libraries. Apple seem to be really pushing their collaboration message at the moment. So it's really cool we can now share things across accounts that are connected. Pretty cool for those nights out with friends or family events where you wanna share photographs, don't have to do that anymore, or working on projects across teams where you can immediately see everything that everyone's contributed. So within a FaceTime call, for example, you could literally share tabs, show people bits of research, write on the same document while speaking remotely. For this remote YouTuber, could work out. The most pleasing thing being promised for later in the year though from Apple is Freeform. Something that Apple are approaching for a, a collaborative, flexible workspace, similar to something like Miro, the board that you use to share things. A great thing for creators and teams that wanna have meetings online, but want all that interactive ability of using an iPad, drawing, writing on the same document. Nice. Number five is desktop class apps. Okay, so what do they mean by this? What I'd like it to mean that they're gonna release Final Cut Pro on the iPad or Logic for you music makers, but no sign of that yet. What it does mean are some more universal adjustments to how we can use an iPad to make it closer to a desktop experience, Mac OS, whilst keeping those lovely advantages of that Apple Pencil and gesture support. We are being promised universal undo, redo, across the system, that'll be good. But I think the most promising update could be for the much maligned Files app on iOS, like being able to view folder sizes and change file extensions, maybe even move files using a drop-down menu button. Apple are also promising a addition of function menus within native apps to do things like save, print from the app, much closer to what we're used to on a standard laptop. That's cool. And that seems to be extending too towards customizable toolbars in iOS. Really great to have all the features that you want at your fingertips. One of the big downfalls for me of iOS was the lack of quick access and interaction with that files app. It doesn't look like Apple will be making it as precise and as flexible as Mac OS just yet. I guess that's a marketing strategy. I guess capitalism strikes again. Hey, we're going in the right direction. I love you, Apple. So I truly believe that customizing and adapting tech and tools to our needs is one of the best ways we can approach having a more simplified life and get more done with less effort. So you should watch this video next on how you can customize your iPad like I have, or this one on the fundamentals of how digital tools can help you organize your life better. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, hit that like button. I'll see you on the next one. You know what to do. Bye.